Born into an influential family, Prabowo joined the military in 1970, a pivotal institution at the time. He quickly rose through the ranks of the elite special forces Kopasis, helped along by his 1983 marriage to then President Suharto's daughter, Titiak. He was, however, sidelined after the fall of the Suharto regime in 1998 when he was dishonorably discharged from the military over allegations of human rights abuses. Despite this blow to his career, Prabowo used close family connections to go into business, and Ray emerged into public life as a multimillionaire and aspiring candidate for the presidency. Prabowo stood unsuccessfully for the presidency in the 2009, 2014, and 2019 elections. In his first bid, he allied with Megawati Sukarno Putri leader of Indonesia's largest party and daughter of President Sukarno. In the following two elections, he created motley coalitions of various parties, alliances that reflected both Prabowo's highly movable political outlook, plus what has been called the promiscuous behavior of Indonesia's political parties. In the 2019 elections, Prabowo conducted a bitterly divisive campaign against incumbent president, Joko Jakau Widodo, playing on deep divisions in Indonesia between those aiming for a more prominent role for Islamic values and those wanting to protect the diverse and tolerant character of Indonesian society. He also initially refused to accept the 2019 election outcome and briefly threatened to mount a campaign in the streets to overturn the results. But despite Prabowo's bitter standoff, against Jokowi in 2019, the two leaders apparently reconciled, with Jokowi's surprise move of taking Prabowo into his camp as defense minister. While ostensibly remaining neutral in this year's election, Jokowi signaled his support for Prabowo's bid by arranging for his eldest son, Gibran Raka Booming Rocker, to stand as Prabowo's vice presidential running mate. What do these results mean for Indonesia's major parties? And leaders and what questions remain? This outcome represents the culmination of a lifetime effort by Prabowo to achieve the ultimate position of power in Indonesia. A key question is how he will conduct himself as president. He is known as a volatile figure, given to fits of anger, and seen as a military enforcer during the Suharto regime. While generally seen as an effective defense minister, he was known for publicly putting forward ill-conceived proposals without presidential authorization. The big question is how Prabowo will act as president. During this year's campaign he was markedly more self-controlled, but it remains to be seen whether he will revert to his old authoritarian habits. Was he only acting when he appeared to be a threat to stability in the 2019 election? Or was he only acting when he seemed more moderate in this year's poll? Will he become Indonesia's version of Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin? Prabowo will need to build a coalition of parties to support his administration in parliament. Under Indonesia's presidential system, the president does not need a parliamentary majority, but a troublesome parliament would be a major impediment for his presidency. While Prabowo swept the field in the presidential contest, his party, Jarindra, received only a small boost to its modest parliamentary vote. With his son as vice president and Prabowo in his debt, Jokowi is well placed to sustain his influence long after he leaves the presidential palace. Jokowi is very keen to protect his policy legacy and maintain the momentum of investment in infrastructure, including the building of a new capital city, and policies designed to encourage local Indonesian investment in processing the country's natural resources. What does the outcome mean for Indonesian democracy? The formal process of the election appears once again to have been free and fair. The massive logistical task of running presidential elections on the same day as managing both national and regional parliamentary elections has been undertaken with the same effectiveness that has characterized Indonesia's six democratic elections. But while the electoral process has been untainted, serious concerns are growing about the conduct of Indonesia's political affairs and governance. Jokowi's anointing of his son as vice president is widely seen as the final sign of his incorporation into the elite and the triumph of dynastic politics. Dynastic succession has been a key feature of the elite's grasp on power and now Jokowi has become a master of the game. 
An implicit alliance between Prabowo and Jokowi could become a way to choke off political competition. Prabowo's election happened through a peaceful transfer of power, but it has cemented in place a system of governance that challenges the ideals of democratic politics that many Indonesians had looked to with hope during the heady days of reformacy after 1998.